Hi guys, my name is Alex Michalitsin. I'm a software developer and virtuoso. And today I'm going to talk about uh, the ways to get information about processes. That's the main problem in the crew. Uh, first of all, I want to start from the problem of getting information about memory mappings. Uh, we know we know that we have special file called procpid smaps and procpid maps which allows us to retrieve all needed data but uh, there is a problem uh, because uh, we can't change the format of these files and these files have basically text format and uh, for crew needs it's not sufficient uh, for us to have only maps file but data uh, and uh, we get all needed data from smaps file. SMAPS file. Uh, that's because this file have a field called VM flux, and uh, also we have some statistics in this file, and that's the problem. Uh, several years ago, during some experiments with uh, live migration performance. It was discovered by Andrew that uh, it takes a lot of time for Creo to get information about process memory mappings. Uh, it occurs when the container have a lot of processes inside and uh, a lot of VMAs inside for these processes. Uh, Andrew designed and proposed a special kernel interface called TaskDiac, which uh, allows to retrieve data about tasks in like in the way like we get uh, the data about processes about the uh, network interfaces uh, using netlink interface uh, latest versions of this uh, interface use only binary uh, protocol part of netlink uh, but uh, no sockets uh, no netlink sockets involved here it's, uh, just a special uh, file on procfs introduced which allows us to use some transactional way to retrieve the data. Uh, we dis uh, unfortunately, this interface wasn't merged to the kernel, and uh, recently we decided to play with eBPF. Uh, last years, we see the extensive roles of eBPF, and uh, one of interesting thing uh, which paid our attention is. Uh, EPPF iterator. EPPF iterators allows us to uh, attach EPPF program and apply this program to some uh, traversable structure in the kernel. For example, we have uh, such iterators for TCP sockets, for UDP sockets, and so on. And uh, last uh, year, uh, the new iterator was designed and implemented in the kernel, it's called task VMA. This iterator allows us to traverse all uh, VMAs for all tasks in uh, PID namespace. We decided to try this to get needed information with some filtering and get some benefits in performance side. Uh, to achieve this, several uh, new helpers was added to the kernel to uh, have to have ability to call these helpers from eBPF program and construct needed uh, data file. Uh, as we can see, we have basically two types of helpers. One helper is about uh, printing uh, PID information. Uh, it's like NSPID field in the procpid status file. And the second type is about printing some uh, pair VMA information. It's uh, one printing uh, binary format data about VMA. It's uh, the borders of VMA, uh, VM flags, page offset, major and minor for mem for file mapped VMA, and I know number. And uh, another two helpers is secu VMA name and secu spec name, which allows us to retrieve uh, data only for some special VMAs. It's special VMA, it's about VDS, VDSO or uh, stack or something, 
something another, for example, heap. And uh, uh, it's worth to mention that Crew doesn't need to know from SMAP's, SMAP file uh, in information about pass to the file because we can retrieve, uh, we can reopen this file using PROC map files interface. And uh, so we can uh, take some time here. And uh, I decided to make some performance test. Uh, to achieve that, I've used uh, already written program in uh, from our uh, Creo test suite called ZTTM. Uh, it maps uh, all six uh, program. This program uh, creates a lot of VMA, about uh, 30,000 of VMAs. I uh, started uh, 160 processes with map, maps all six executable and uh, turned on BPF JIT. And uh, also I uh, uh, have info about my note on slide. And let's take a look on some numbers here. Uh, we see several columns. The first two, it's, it's uh, we're pretty familiar with these uh, two interfaces. And uh, last third columns is uh, about our new way with the BPF. Uh, this column is when we are printing data to set a file in text format from eBPF program. Not so optimal way. Uh, this one is about printing the same, but in binary format. So we don't use printf here. And uh, the last one is like previous one, but without the calling the pass helper for regular file. As we can see, we get almost the same result as with proc maps, but it's but as I mentioned before, proc maps file is useless for Creo needs because we need to know uh, VM flux, but maps file don't contain this flux. And uh, the reason why we have very uh, similar numbers here is because we have really have a lot of VMAs, but we have not VMAs, but not so many processes. In my setup, it was about 160 processes from test and uh, something about 200 on processes from my system. Uh, and uh, of course we can assume that if that uh, this maps file, we, we, we should open this map file for each process in the system, but when we're using eBPF iterator, we have one file uh, from which we can retrieve information about all processes from this namespace. Uh, I also put some comments and explanations about the results. First of all, we have to know that SMAP, SMAP's file contains some very costly function called SMAP gazer stats. This function retrieves some per VMA information, statistical information. And this function contains uh, the loop over VMAs, over the pages, and uh, it's really costly. Uh, another point here is that each eBPF iterator program uh, needs in, uh, runs in special context. So we take in uh, RCU, RCU read lock and also we doing migrate disable call uh, for my non preemptible kernel. RCU read lock have no any effect, of course, but migrate disable may uh, eat some time. It's about 4% four, four of total time from perf. This, this data gathered from perf. Uh, another point here is that secu file implementation, which used in the BPF uh, FS, uh, slightly different than the original one secu file, especially the secu the read syscall implementation is different. We have fixed secu buffer size in eBPF, uh, while we have 
dynamically changing buffer size when we use generic SQL files. Uh, another point is that DPS helpers, it's about 14% uh, per of time. And uh, it's also worth to mention that uh, BPF printf helper is slightly slower than the SQL printf function. Uh, another important topic for us, for Crew developers, is the mounts. It's a pain for us because we have a lot of different hard situations uh, when we need to retrieve some information about data, about, about some mount, but this mount was overmounted or something similar. And uh, of course, we have mount uh, info interface, but we have a lot of uh, issues with this uh, file because uh, we can't extend this format, this file easily because it's used in many programs and we can't break the compatibility. Another problem is that this text file format and uh, it's not uh, fast. Uh, also, uh, we can't limit, we can't query particular mounts information. Uh, we meet last year when we working on the Docker support in Creo. Uh, we meet the problem with overlay first mounts. Uh, we wanted to know uh, to get uh, lower gears and upper gears and uh, work gear uh, pass from overlay first mount, but we can't uh, get this information because overlay first saves this pass uh, during the mounting as it was uh, provided by the user, but user may provide this pass as relative. For Creo, of course, for Creo needs, it's not sufficient. And uh, we proposed the uh, patch to the kernel, which just adds the DPS uh, call and uh, get the full pass. But that was a bad idea because uh, uh, this uh, resulting pass may be uh, very long and we will uh, meet the problem with performance from SQL file side. As I mentioned before, we have dynamically changing buffer size and SQL file and we will get the several reallocations of this big buffer and that's, that's bad. Uh, Some time ago, uh, we uh, see that there is the great uh, and ready to merge interface called FSN4. This interface allows to retrieve data about mounts uh, uh, using the binary and ex easily extendable format. It even allows us to get information about particular mount by mount identificator. And uh, I was experimented with that uh, subsystem and written support for overlay FS mounts and uh, managed to get needed data about uh, lower gears and upper gears and so on, uh, like file handles. Using these file handles, I can reopen these files and get real full pass uh, for, from overlay FS. That's what was great. But unfortunately, this sub subsystem wasn't merged in the, into the kernel uh, still. Uh, we decided to play with eBPF again, and uh, I prepared the iterator and the new iterator. Its iterator allows to uh, traverse through the mounts of particular mount namespace uh, by attaching this uh, iterator to by file descriptor of some mount namespace. Uh, here is a super simple example of a program which allows us to print the uh, mount ID and parent mount ID and uh, uh, root directory uh, I name uh, for mount. But as we can see, we have uh, full access to struct mount and struct mount namespace. So, uh, we can, uh, for example, we can construct some code we, which may 
retrieve dps from from pass struct we can construct pass struct and then call dps helper and get the pass for mount or something similar uh, time for some conclusions about all of that uh first of all i personally want to say that uh i believe that we need to uh utilize ebpf extensibility to create some interfaces uh when we need to get it uh to work fast yeah but uh, the great example here is a uh, google summer of code project from this year by kumar uh, about eu ring support uh, but when we're talking about some stable things like the process uh, mappings information or mounts it's uh, it looks like we have a place to stop and think about some modern new interfaces which uh, will be stable and uh, allow us to get this information without any problems the ebpf is great but the problem with ebpf it's because it's uh, comes from the helpers we still have to create special helpers in the kernel and it works almost like generic syscalls because uh because we if we add some helper to ebpf it uh, should be stable and of course it's not easier and it's not super easy to uh, get this to create this in in a safe way uh so anyway we need to uh think on the interfaces here I think that's all. Uh, also, I want to say thanks to Andre for his help and advices and ideas about this topic. Cool. I mean, uh, the uh, uh, FS info uh, work is needed in any case. So I, I think that information, some of that information should definitely be exposed uh, there. The EBPF stuff is really, I find really interesting. You said so one of the uh, restrictions that you correctly listed, obviously, is that it's restricted to CAPSIS admin, right? Yep. yep. Um, and we are not foreseeing any future where we have unprivileged EBPF anytime soon, but we will have a way of doing signed EBPF programs, right? Yes. And I have no clear, I, hopefully someone from the EPPF crowd is here, but the, the way I envisioned it, uh, unprivileged EPPF prog programs could work is when you essentially, Creo would ship an EPPF program, this is signed and that the kernel essentially knows about, which the administrator allow listed, I guess. And uh, then you could even load these programs as an unprivileged user to figure out information. But maybe I'm totally living in a dream world, and this is now actually why we do get signed EBPF programs. But this, in my head, would be one way of making this more usable, because it is really powerful and it's really uh, easily extendable and for extensible and for um, for Creo, this seems like something that would be uh, that would be really interesting. Yep. Did you have to uh, implement anything in the kernel for this, or is this really just pure EBPF from from user space loaded and figure out the information? Uh, no, I, as I mentioned before, I uh, implemented the kernel iterator for mounts ah, okay. and uh, several helpers for getting information about uh, VMAs. And also, I've played with the Creo and uh, made some patches to the Creo, which uses this new interface to get the information about the VMAs. But uh, I not prepared the pull request because anyway, I need to uh, post the kernel site at first and send to the yeah. mailing list and so on. Sure. Uh, Andre, go ahead, please. 
So I have a question about performance. Uh, could you switch back to the slide with performance numbers? One second, yes. Yeah, here we can see that proc maps and eBPF maps just actually on the same performance level. Yep. If it's... we look at TaskDiac, we, we can find that TaskDiac was something like 10 times faster. Ah, in case of yep. proc maps, we need to open a separate file for each process. Mm. Uh, but, yep. So the question why EDPF is so slow? Uh, yep, as I as I said before, it's uh, about for my hypothesis here is that we have not so many processes in this setup because map maps all six tests. Uh, generates a lot of VMAs, about 30,000 of VMAs, but uh, I have uh, the something about 300 of processes in my system, yeah? So it means that the open syscall will, we, we, then we have uh, something about 300 of open syscalls, yeah? And that's not seriously. But the serious uh, part of this time was in uh, secure in in read syscall in secure read function, and uh, we have almost all time we uh, working almost all, CPU working almost all time in the inside the BPF program. Yeah, uh, that's that's why we have such numbers. Yeah. Uh, also, it's worth to mention that DPS is really uh, reflects on the results, yeah? Because we, when we get rid of DPS, we have the 15% improvement in the time, yeah? Um, that's uh, good for us from the Creo side. Yeah, I would expect... Uh... So, if... We have uh, two numbers for eBPF in text format and for eBPF in binary format. And we see the difference between these numbers. It's quite big. Proc maps in text format too. And it's, its performance is like uh, eBPF binary format. So I, I don't know. I, I would Yeah, uh, uh, no, yeah. And, and another another... Another argument here is that we, yeah, I have BPF JIT enabled, so it means that we have uh, all working just like it's C, C code, yeah, written and compiled in the kernel. But as I, I mentioned before, we have some extra calls in the kernel uh, just before, uh, just after and before each call of our BPF program, we have some uh rcu read lock section we have migrate disable but as i said already in my particular case rcu read lock um, not reflects on the result because because i have non-preemptible kernel so rcu read lock it's like no op yeah but uh, migrate disable have something about four percent reflection here yeah uh But uh, but when I analyzed the general structure or and uh, about persons of time uh, where in which function we was during the execution, I see the topologically equivalent situation between the proc maps and uh, our uh, binary format. Uh, I think that it's just because we have not fully optimized the code uh, which JIT which JIT generates for us here, but that's a hard question, really, really hard, really hard question. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think this is the end of the slot. This was really an interesting talk. Um, I definitely like it better than the Netlink version. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Netlink, but I, I get the point. I mean, task type was also a nice idea. Um, and
And uh, yeah, so thank you for attending this uh, micro conference. I hope uh, you learned some new things and uh, heard some interesting discussions. Uh, we obviously can follow up with a bunch of these things in various email threads. Uh, we'll try to write up a summary again, as we usually do, usually do uh, for the session so that everyone is correctly informed. Um, and with that, I thank you all for attending.